morning, everyone. I'm Rebecca Metcalf, and I'm president of Life Ventures, which is a health and lifestyle retirement planning firm. And I'm delighted to be part of this project, and uh, because at Life Ventures, we're passionate about working with people to create their preferred futures in retirement. I'm a professional retirement planner, but prior to launching Life Ventures a number of years ago, I had an over 30 year career in the health field. And so I have a great deal of experience uh, from those years in nursing leadership, in advanced nursing practice, um, planning health promotion programs right across the life cycle, including healthy aging, and a great deal of um, experience also in coaching and mentoring people and in adult education. I combined all of those knowledges and experiences um, with my passion for working with people to facilitate change in their lives that benefits them and encourage them to be well and healthy. And so Life Ventures was born. Today, I'm interested in working with you to discover your recipe for retirement success. It's to get you thinking about retirement and what you really want in the years ahead and how to make that happen. So, in fact, we're going to look at the new retirement and what that means to you, exploring your expectations and reality your concerns and mechanisms for coping, as well as looking at the various phases of transition to retirement and living the journey, your unique journey to retirement success. So, retirement isn't what it used to be. If we go back generations, 100 years ago, life expectancy was about 50 years of age, and leaving work was an event that was followed by a few years of withdrawing from active society to the pursuit of a few leisure activities and then a decline in one's health resulting in death. Today, we're living longer, much longer. In fact, when people retire, they are looking at a quarter to a third of their life still ahead of them. That's about the same amount of time that people spend in their careers. And so retirement now is not just an event and a few years before you die. It is in fact a huge major transition in your life that offers all kinds of opportunities as well as challenges. A key question is, what quality of life will you have? Some people think that retirement marks a slow decline in terms of their functionality and capacities to engage in life. But in fact, what we know is that 70% of aging after retirement is related to lifestyle and lifestyle choices and that half of the diseases and accidents that compromise quality of life as people move along this continuum are in fact preventable. So in fact, the number one predictor of success in retirement is not money, but it is the measure of one's health. And so in terms of moving through retirement, a colleague of mine uh, came up with three key phases um, which he termed go 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 slow and no go now what does that mean the go go phase is when one is fully active so when people leave uh, work as they currently know it um, to enter into this next phase of their lives um, they're continually engaged in doing things. In fact, at least 60% and those numbers keep increasing of people who leave full-time employment 
um, to enter into this next phase of their life will continue to work to generate income. And why is that? We have never had a generation retiring with so much debt. Some people's retirements are underfunded. Other people want to continue to work for their paycheck to, um, to add to their lifestyle choices and uh, the things that they want to do. And many people are just um, wanting to continue to contribute to society and have purpose and be active. The go slow phase is one in which people are taking it a little easier, staying a little closer to home. And the no-go phase is a time late in life where your health is compromised and your capacity for certain activities is, is seriously limited. Now, the rate of progression through those three phases will be gauged by your health and your energy. So recognizing that significance about health is key to planning a successful retirement. And in the words of Gail Sheehy, a well-published author who writes about life transitions um, in her books, Passages and New Passages, I quote, Although death is inevitable, the way in which we age is not. Successful aging is actually a career choice. Are you going to sit back and let aging happen to you? Or are you going to continue to make life happen to you? For you, excuse me. Next. But before we start discussing how to best continue to make life happen for you, let's shift gears and uh, talk a little bit about um, your work. Working for a living is a mixed blessing, as we all know. We all complain about certain aspects of our work, the hours, the workload, the demands, deadlines, difficult people we um, have to work with, less than desirable work environments, and the list goes on. Too often, our work becomes the focal point of our lives, our identity, and our primary source for friendships and socializing. And it's interesting that the farther one moves up levels of administration in companies and organizations, the truer that is, and the more difficult it is for people in those situations to let go of their uh, jobs. It's surprising how many human needs are in fact met at work. However, failure to let go and to replace these with other meaningful areas in your life will relegate you to the cocktail party situation where people ask you, what are you doing? And your answer is always, I was. I was this position, I was employed here, I did that, but in fact, you're continuing to live in what your life was and are not moving on. This has serious repercussions, which we'll get to. Next slide. So in my work with um, clients, um, these five areas uh, come up time and again in terms of what work provides. Financial um, stability, of course. Status, as I was just mentioning. A sense of usefulness and contributing to society. A structure for your life and how you spend your time. And socialization. So in fact, these things contribute to feelings of achievement, belonging, self-esteem, or self-worth, and provide us with a framework, a schedule, an agenda for our days, weeks, months, and years. So, important aha moment. The perspective around framing a successful retirement is to think about not retiring from something, Yes, you need to let go, 
but to retire to something. And discovering what that something is will be a key ingredient in your recipe for a successful retirement. Otherwise, retirement can bring about feelings of emptiness and despair. This often happens to people who are forced into retirement too soon because of downsizing at work, uh, taking um, package options, um, or uh, people who choose to uh, retire early um, with the idea of um, activities that can engage them. Um, one story poignantly points to this, um, Carol, a formal high school teacher, retired at 50. She was wild with joy. I felt privileged to be able to leave my high stress job. Her first summer of retirement, she was on cloud nine. However, the following autumn, at the start of the school year, everything came crashing down. Her daughter was on her own and not living at home. She did not have her work to go to and she lived alone. And she lost all reference points all in one full swoop. And a deep depression followed. And it actually took this woman a number of years to get herself sorted out. And she sums it up by saying, uh, and those years was through support and coaching and um, uh, trying a number of uh, different um, strategies uh, to shape her life. But she sums it up by saying, my mistake was that I didn't take the time to properly plan for my retirement. It just happened so suddenly. It caught me completely off guard. So there are three key lifestyle needs that need to be addressed in creating your future in retirement. And these things replace key aspects of what people get from work. So structure, to provide a routine for you day. It may seem very appealing to not have a schedule, and that's really fun for a while, but without a framework for our day, there is a real tendency for people to get lazy. And before you know it, you can spend the whole day puttering around, the day is over, and you say, what? Where did it go? I haven't done anything. In fact, you might not even be out of your pajamas yet. And I've been there. And I know how quickly that can, pattern can set in. So in fact, structure helps us to organize ourselves um, otherwise. And certainly uh, around purpose. The fulfillment we derive from work needs to be replaced with other activities and pursuits that are meaningful, useful, contributing um, to our communities, our families, and society. And a third key area is a sense of belonging. Our work is our community when we're there. One of our communities, we're all part of any number of communities in our lives. But certainly, it's a key community we're part of. And many people's friendships and socializing um, is, in fact, focused on the work environment. And they're working such long hours and so on. By the time they finally get home, a um, few hours with family, um, to bed, and they're up and back at work again. So replacing this sense of community with other connections to other communities and other people and developing new friendships and particularly friendships that include young people as well as those your own age um, becomes key to creating um, retirement success. Next please. So how will you go about meeting these needs in your, re in your retirement? We find that it's helpful to begin thinking about your expectations. What matters to you? What are your values? 
What do you value? What is your vision for this next phase of your life? It could be you don't have one or you've never thought of these things, which is exactly why we start here. So, also important to acknowledge that in thinking about these things, there are many myths surrounding us about retirement. We've all seen the big colorful ads often around RRSP contribution time of silver haired somethings um, who are all smiles and uh, surfing in Hawaii or globe trotting to exotic uh, locales um, or riding off in the sunset on their Harleys. And these visions um, really are far from reality for many people. And they also propagate the myth that, that happiness and a successful retirement is predicated on having the money to do these things, which in terms of the ads and going those places and um, uh, being able to afford this um, would require you to have a great deal of money. And of course, that's what people who are in funds want you to do is to uh, contribute more money. But in fact, how much money you need in retirement is truly gauged to what it is you want to do. So if your retirement features spending half your year in a villa in Spain and at least getting away for a few weeks to another property in a southern locale, then obviously you're going to need a lot more money than if what matters to you is having a comfortable space in which to live in where you, where you do and being able to get out in your community and do things in your community and uh, pursue um, uh, various um, new undertakings which are not as expensive as some of those other options. So this is why it's really important then to define what you want your future to look like. And then, of course, the planning for how to fund it comes into play. So you need to stay grounded in your own reality and uh, in addressing opportunities and challenges. Oh, and yes, another myth about retirement is that it's one big vacation. And that's just not true. In fact, many people spend what we call the honeymoon phase just after they leave full-time work as it is. And, um, you know, they, they lunch out with friends, they sleep in, they, um, they do plan some trips. Um, and it does seem like being on vacation. But I can assure you that pursuing any leisure activities full time for 25 to 30 years is going to be truly boring if that's all you do. Okay, so uh, there's more to it than, than one big vacation. All right, in terms of looking at your expectations and what matters to you, there will be concerns you have surfaced. And here is a list of common concerns that people have looking towards retirement. And what I can tell you is when people first start thinking about it, finances are number one concern that people have, followed by their health. Will I have the health to do the things that I would like to do? And then time. How am I going to fill all of that time? And I know that there are people who get very busy and, and um, their challenge is the opposite, that they're now involved in so many activities um, that they can't balance their lives with time to themselves. But more often than not, it is around how will I fill all of that time. And then after people retire, my experience is that those top three, the list is reversed. Time and health, are 
key concerns, battling it out for number one and two, followed by finances. And then, of course, uh, there's uh, many other concerns that people have. Uh, relationships. And relationships do change in retirement. Um, so will my marriage change? Marriages do change. It's no surprise that there is a spike in divorce um, when couples both retire. And in fact, oftentimes this is about um, couples living parallel lives with a common interest of their children until such time the children leave home. Both people retire and discover they have very little or nothing in common. So relationships in marriages, partnerships, need to be renegotiated. Other relationships change. We talked about uh, leaving the workplace and will you stay in touch with your friends? Where will you find new friends? Um, and how will you do that? Loneliness, also an issue related to our connectedness and friends or not, and um, partnerships or not. Housing, what kind of home will suit my needs now? Where? How will I afford it? What does it look like? How will I replace the challenges of my working life? Do I still have something to contribute? You know, a lot of people's fears around retirement are about will I still be of value? Will I still have meaning? At work, whether you're a surgical nurse, use my, my own field, um, an airline pilot, a construction contractor, a store clerk, whatever role you have had, you had a role. You had expectations. You knew what to expect of other people in your work setting. They knew what to expect of you. There were challenges. You were moving towards something. And then in leaving work, as you knew it, you're no longer part of this constellation. If you worked as part of a team, you're no longer a team member. People are not asking your opinions about the field that you were in. Um, there's no excitement. And there's no anticipation of what tomorrow will bring or the next day or next week. And life can end up being boring and seemingly meaningless. People also have concerns about how long they're going to live and will they have the health, of course, to support um, their interests and what's going to happen when they lose those who are close to them. How will they cope with that? And then also estate planning, have I got my affairs in order and, and, and how do I begin? All of these concerns can figure into people taking a look at what matters to them and what they would like to do, what their expectations are, and how to get there. So with this opportunity, though, to uh, set your own agenda and explore your expectations, um, I use this tool with people to get them thinking. And it starts off three years after I retire, I. But it doesn't have to be that. If you were five years from retirement now, you could say in five years' time when I retire, I. Okay? Um, and so you can change the time frames, but the, f the open ended statements are useful in helping people think about what matters to them. So it is about completing the sentences. So three years after I retire, I want to have done. There may be one, more than one answer that you have. 
Um, or there may be more questions generated by completing these sentences. Three years after I retire, I want to know. What? Could be about um, additional learning. Or maybe you want to know yourself more. So that search inside. Three years after I retire, I want to be as busy as I am now, fully engaged in a new pursuit. The list is endless. Three years after I retire, I want to live. How, where, etc. I want to keep. What? Could be possessions. Could be friends. Could be your marriage. Again, many options. After I retire, I will have to. Could be move, downsize. Um, reinvent myself, uh, find a pursuit that gives me the satisfaction um, that I had in my work, etc. And final one, I will be wanting to. So um, this is, as I say, a tool, um, a working um, uh, document, if you will, and you can use it at any time. And then it's important, once you have completed the sentences, to actually discuss um, what you want to do and how you've answered the questions with your spouse or if or partner or if you're alone, you live alone, with a trusted friend who really knows you. And this is about um, a reality check. Is what you're talking about realistic? And as I said on the bottom here, when expectations meet reality, happiness results. A vital component for creating your uniquely satisfying future is your attitude. Whether it is considering the answers to those questions, whether it is how you face the day when you um, wake up in the morning, each of us each and every day has an opportunity to set a positive intention and approach and to set a positive attitude for every life situation and opportunity and challenge that presents itself as one for learning and personal growth. As it is said, if you think you can or think you can't, both are true. So if our attitude is positive, the chances of, of us moving forward with a positive framework and with flexibility and adaptability will be hugely assistive in coping with the changes of retirement. However, if your glass is only half full, or if it's half empty, excuse me, if your glass is only, you know that terminology, is your glass half full, that's the positive, or half empty, the negative. So if your glass is half empty, then it's going to be challenging to create a successful retirement because there's always going to be that negativity that comes into play about, um, I can't do this, um, I can't adjust to that, I'm not good enough, um, I don't have any friends, um, I don't have meaningfulness in my life, there's no way I can get there. And that obviously is very limiting in terms of uh, its potential for um, creating a life that you want to live. Okay. And so what we do know is that so per perspective means a lot. And um, for people who um, are successful in retirements, there are a number of things that we know um, and that um, I have experience working with clients about how they cope with life. And this is useful in terms of considering um, your future ahead. They face reality. In other words, they've learned to accept life as it is and make the best of it, and they're in touch with themselves. 
and they're not afraid to compromise when necessary. These people take responsibility for themselves and their lives, and they don't blame other people for their problems, and they accept help if it's needed, but they also make an effort to solve their own problems. They have a keen interest in other people and getting outside of their comfort zone and uh, their normal social circles to meet new people and do new things and create new connections and friendships and including uh, reaching out to younger people. You're going to find over the time of your uh, years in retirement that you'll start to lose friends that you had, family who you have. Um, and so cultivating friendships with younger people begins to make a lot of sense. But younger people also have an entirely different perspective on life and um, from where they are at in their journeys. And that is healthy and beneficial in terms of balancing um, where you may be at. People successful in adjusting have strong and varied interests, like to engage in lots of different kinds of activities and enjoy sharing those with other people. Um, and they're interested in new things, lifelong learning. Right? Um, they're not afraid of the future and what the future brings. They're focused on their health, and uh, as I started off at the beginning of this presentation, in addition to those three needs for structure, purpose, and sense of community, um, I think I positioned health as the number one factor for a successful retirement. So these people focus on, on their health, developing and maintaining uh, their health, um, but also in terms of dealing with illness and disease that um, they don't dwell on their aches and pains, and they try and look at what their potential is versus um, what their limitations are. Also, these people maintain a neat appearance. Um, it's interesting how insightful that is um, into people's lives, um, that they continue to take pride in their appearance, and also pride in maintaining their homes as well. And they know how to relax and enjoy and not take life too seriously. So a lengthy list, but one that comes from people's experience and the wisdom of what it takes to be successful um, in adjusting to retirement and creating and living the life that you want. So, retirement now features as one of, as we said, it's not an event, it's a major life transition. As big a transition as others that you have lived through. Um, going to college, getting your first job, getting married, having a family, um, going back to school, whatever it might be. But all of those previous transitions, in fact, um, have fueled you with experience, learning, and hopefully wisdom in terms that can be applied to the transition to retirement. So in terms of thinking about how you're going to cope, think about how have I coped in the past? What has worked for me? What hasn't worked? How can I change that? Also, in terms of the length of time that, that each person has lived, they have developed skills, skill sets, and a lot of uh, inner resources as well, whether those be character traits or personal strengths. Um, again, looking towards getting in touch with yourself and your reality, and how can I use that? Family and friends can figure in assisting with um, life's transitions, and retirement is no exception. And there are many, many, many resources. And um, every, every time I turn around, there seems to be something else I haven't heard of. Um, and there are new books written, people's experiences about retirement, and how-tos, ideas for new involvement. There are community support programs, such as Caregiving Matters. 
there are life coaches, there are lifestyle retirement planners, and there are a plethora of web-based um, resources, be that websites, chat rooms, blogs, um, social media opportunities um, to engage. So you're not alone. And in, in um, coping, but you also have a lot, if you look inside from past experiences and your own personal strengths. So in formal retirement phases, there are many frameworks for looking at this, but um, one that I use has six different phases in it. And so the first one is called uh, the remote stage. And this occurs many, many years before people retire. And it's often fueled by going back to those ads about you need to start preparing for your retirement and putting money away. Um, uh, you know, in your 20s and so on. So, you know, it's uh, distant thoughts about this, but it's not on your radar screen yet. And um, so oftentimes people see it as so remote that they don't begin to prepare for it. And there are um, consequences of that around the, around the financial issues as, as pensions um, continue to disappear. But anyway, so a far out stage. The near stage is a few years before retirement. And, you know, I talked about that tool in terms of being uh, starting to clarify what matters to you and what your expectations are and so on. So um, you're more than just remotely thinking about this. You're beginning to take some concrete steps to uh, generate some ideas, right? And have some discussions. And that tool will help you um, to do so. Um, for those people who are not looking forward to aging and retirement, they can no longer deny that they are getting older, but they still may not be taking positive steps to prepare. And then there's the retirement event itself, and um, people um, react differently to their last day of work. Some people are joyous and can't wait to start their new lives. They've given a lot of thought, they've done a lot of planning about this already. Other people are filled with fear. Oftentimes people have a mixture of emotions. They're looking forward to things, but they also have concerns. The honeymoon stage, talked about that a little earlier. Yippee! Relief, excitement, you're no longer on somebody else's agenda, you have all this time, you can do whatever you want or nothing at all. And, um, and so you do any or all of those things. But if, this, um, if you don't get beyond this stage, the novelty of retirement will wear off. And uh, as with the story of um, uh, the woman I, I read to you about, um, you can become disillusioned and depression can um, set in and a great deal of disenchantment. So um, the disenchantment stage um, will likely occur if in fact your retirement is not working out the way you thought it would and you haven't made uh, plans, you haven't adjusted your plans and so on. And uh, when does this set in? Well, for some people, it could be six months after they retire, the honeymoon phase is over, they don't have anything else planned. And for other people, it might be two years down the road because they have a plan. The plan isn't working out the way they thought it would. Why did I think this was a good idea at the time? Um, but some people might feel disillusioned immediately after retiring. Um, circumstance that I talked about, if you were a center of action and um, a whole lot going on at work and you leave and suddenly all of that is missing, can be um, uh, very disenchanting immediately following retirement. So then there is the reorientation phase where um, people hopefully will make adjustments, sort through, um, cope, change, um, have flexibility, and get reinvolved in their lives. And at some point, people will reach 
hopefully, a stage of stability in which they feel satisfied with their lives and they feel successful in the retirement. Now, the progression in terms of these stages uh, may very well not be linear, nor does everybody go through all of them. So, in fact, um, you certainly, there's the far stage and the near stage in retirement, um, but after that, you can go through the honeymoon phase and then right into stability because you've got a firm plan, it's working for you, the world is unfolding as it should, um, and as per your expectations, and it's balanced with, with uh, being realistic for you. Um, or you could go through honeymoon phase and disenchantment and back to honeymoon phase and then disenchantment, some reorientation, and da 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 da. Sometimes it takes people years to get this right. But the fact of the matter is, it's an individual journey. And that's what it is. This is a journey. And so it is all about um, living for today um, as well as, as tomorrow. So while sometimes in terms of these six stages, it may feel like you're jumping off a cliff into a great abyss or going back and forth amongst those phases that your life is just a roller coaster ride, and please, how do I get off? To um, extremes of um, considering that it's all just going to be a cakewalk and there won't be any issues, that's head in the sand approach. To the very negative other extreme of it's woe and no, oh, and there's nothing left for me in life, and it's a downward spiral and I have nothing to look forward to, and, um, and then I'm gonna die. Hopefully somewhere amongst all of these various phases and back and forth, you will come to a balanced equation um, in terms of what works for you. And you will be able to say, I'm happy. I feel like I am really doing what I want to do and how I want to do it. And that will be your unique retirement success. I leave you with a quote that's related to planning. Next slide. This quote by Charles Kettering as a, uh, an inventor um, in the late 1800s to mid 1900s over 300 patents, he invented, amongst other things, freon gas for refrigeration, air conditioning, uh, heavily involved in the car industry. Anyway, planning was obviously important to him. And um, so his approach, this one is forward thinking, positive perspective. I expect to spend the rest of my life in the future. So I want to be reasonably sure of what kind of future it's going to be. That is my reason for planning. But as we know, life happens when we're making plans to do other things. So to say, plan for tomorrow, but enjoy and live for today. And I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me. And I uh, wish your life ventures in retirement lead you to full success and happiness. Thank you. <laughs>